Story 1. Ada for leaving my husband without putting up a fight. My, 25F, husband, 30M, has been acting really stranger recently staying out late without any explanation leaving really early and random expensive gifts with no apparent reason. I'm not naive and I put two and two together and realized he was cheating. I didn't want to start looking through his phone and his belongings or start stalking his social media or any of that so I sat on the couch and waited for him to come home. Once he got home I asked him to sit down and asked him if he was cheating he was honest and told me he was and apologized said it meant nothing and it wouldn't happen again. Honestly I cannot trust him and without trust a relationship can't survive. So I went upstairs packed my things he chased after me asking me to stop and give him a chance I just finished packing and left. This was three days ago and since I left I have been bombarded with texts and emails and voicemails saying how could I leave without even trying to fix things and that if I ever loved him I would want to stay and go through this and that every couple goes through hard times. I am really conflicted as on on band he was my first love and I haven't just lost those feelings overnight but in the other hand he broke my trust and truthfully he won't ever earn that back. Ada, Intia, ask him this. How could he cheat without even trying to fix things? If he ever loved you, he wouldn't have cheated. Every couple goes through hard times. Yet somehow you managed to stay faithful. The hard times were his cheating. Someone should tell him not every couple goes through hard times. He's trying to downplay his cheating. Cheating is not hard times. It is a fundamental breach of trust and a betrayal of the relationship. Hard times in a relationship are survivable. Cheating in a relationship should not be. Hard times can imply that no one is at fault whereas cheating is an active choice. He didn't slip and fall into someone else's bed. He made the continuous choice to cheat and to guilt by his wife expensive things meaning he knew he was wrong but wanted to eat his cake and have it too. He didn't come clean until confronted directly, either. No, NTA, you don't owe him anything anymore. He broke your trust, the sacred vow. If you feel, it's over, that you can't trust him, then that is how it is. Focus on yourself. NTA, he stopped fighting for your relationship when he started cheating. What he's doing now is victim blaming. If that doesn't work, there's a good chance that he will blame the affair partner. Don't fall for it. He's the only one who betrayed you, except if AP is your friend or family. I gave my cheating ex the boot. It didn't take but a few weeks for him to try backpedaling and pretending our marriage still had a chance. Something like, the jury's still out on which of you I'm going to pick, face with rolling eyes. Within a few weeks more he's crying on the phone saying, why didn't you fight for me? Pathetic. I don't remember my exact answer, but it included boisterous laughter. Someone who would cheat on me isn't worth fighting for. I deserve better than a booby prize. If I ever loved him I would want to stay and go through this. If he ever loved you he would not have cheated on you. NTA, and please proceed with the divorce. You'll never be able to trust him again. Not to mention how insulting it is to throw it all away for someone slash something that meant nothing. If she meant nothing, that means you meant less than nothing. Thank you. The meant nothing excuse makes it that much worse. There's no fight to put up. You were cheated on. You left. Also, saying it meant nothing is actually not the excuse he thinks it is. If my GF ever cheated and told me that she did it because he was better, or she loved him, or whatever, it would hurt less, because at least she had a reason. Saying, yeah, I was fucking someone that meant nothing to me, means they ruined us just so. NTAOFC, you owe no single obligation here. Exactly. He's basically saying it was just a piece of ass, so wife shouldn't be bothered by it. And if the other woman was nothing, who's to say he won't just do it again with another nothing person? Story 2. Falsely accused by my own daughter. Posted some of this on another sub, but because of their rules, a lot I wasn't allowed to post. Anyway, here is my sad story. I have three daughters and am divorced from their mother. Oldest spied on me during the divorce, saying she wanted to live with me. She was 18 and was before she ran away to another state to transition. She is post-surgery M2F and has since stopped all contact. The other two at time of this story were 16 and 14. I hurt my back and needed back surgery. As I would be out of work and would not have money coming in, I filed for a temporary stay of alimony. The girl's mother was very emotionally abusive during our marriage and had driven me into a very deep depression prior to our marriage, exploding two years prior to my back surgery. 
The depression was so bad that I was hospitalized twice for suicidal thoughts. After I filed for a stay, her mother had a hissy fit. She hired an aggressive lawyer who took great joy in attempting to make me miserable. I say all this to set up what happened in February 2016. Her lawyer filed a string of papers alluding to me being unstable and filed a motion for all my mental health records. I did not know, at the time, those records were protected and short of a calamity they could not have them. All I knew was they had decided to go after my visitation with my daughters, and I feared they were attempting to get a pickup order. For three days that fear of my kids being dragged out of my house by the sheriff filled my waking moments. It was too much. I knew I was going to lose my daughters, and I would never see them again. It was my greatest fear from the divorce. I told her to come get the girls. I told them to pack up and I cried and hugged their necks. Then I locked myself in my bathroom and swallowed 6010, slash 325 Percocet I sat down and waited to die. Unfortunately, my current wife of eight months called the sheriff, and they took me to the hospital. And then the real hell began. I got out of the hospital and skipped my next week's visitation. We had alternating weeks, because I knew I was not strong enough for the stress of having to deal with my psychopath ex. So three weeks from my hospitalization, I am preparing to get the girls again when my ex goes for an ex part order suspending my visitation. For those who do not know what an ex part order is, it is where only one side goes before a judge and is only legally allowed when there is immediate safety issues that preclude calling other party in to talk to the judge. As it was middle of her week, there was not an immediate safety issue and they had more than 48 hours to notify me of the hearing. As such, the order was illegal. But still I was not allowed any contact with my daughters until the judge had a full hearing on his order, something he is required by law to do ASAP. Two more weeks go by and I get a message by the parenting software we are required to use that the 16 years old was hospitalized for a visceral overdose. This was more than 24 hours after she was taken to the hospital. I called the judge's office and had to fight to speak to him as it was an emergency and I wanted to visit my daughter in the hospital. The judge said the meeting over the phone with me and my ex-wife's lawyer. Lawyer claims daughter would be released the next day. It was all a mistake, etc. and asks judge not to allow me to visit so that son of a bitch, may he rot in hell, agreed. I could not visit my daughter. The wait for a court date went into May. Judge made it very clear that he would not have time to schedule a hearing on his bullshit ex part order for at least a year, but if I let the magistrate hear it then it would be May. Magistrate first had to hear other motions. She lambasted both me and my ex for letting our hostility with each other turn our daughters into weapons. And know what? She was right. Second day of hearing, I told magistrate that I was willing to let go of girls to keep them from being weapons. Magistrate changed immediately. She found in favor on all motions and ordered my ex-wife to make sure girls both came to supervised visitation until we had the hearing on the ex-part order which ex-wife's lawyer was trying to get delayed yet again. My 16 years old had refused to go to supervised visitation with me since it was set up in April. Magistrate told her that we would be having a hearing on it during the next two weeks as they had not placed a bond as required by law, etc., etc. And then we had a break. When we came back, her lawyer had wanted to call 16 years old therapist with disturbing news and was told no. The day before the had agreed no witnesses this set and had released all my properly subpoenaed witnesses. So then her lawyer tells magistrate that a complaint had been made to DCF against me. That complaint was bullshit and found without merit. And then suddenly my 16 years old claimed to DCF that I had been sexually abusing her since she was five. My ex-wife told me this on July 4th on a phone call that I could tell was being recorded. Then the sicko actually suggested that the 16 years old came on to me. W.T. Actual F. Hole, why would she lie? Just trying to find anything they could spin to charge me. At this point, the attorneys recommended I never see either girl again. How could I trust them after this lie? We settled the suit the next month. Turned out X lied to the court to get alimony. At time of divorce, she actually made more money than me but told court she made less than half my salary. Since psychiatrist would not okay me to go back to work, she got no child support, she got no further alimony, and we agreed not to sue her for the $20,000 she stole and I agreed not to contact my minor children until they reach out to me. The 16 years old graduated from high school in June, I was not invited. I do know that they know they can contact me but neither have. 
I am under no illusion. They will never speak to me again. My current wife is physically handicapped and I know I will outlive her. The day she dies, I plan on blowing my brains out. Story 3 I broke off from a friend group I've known for 7 years over a tab at Chili's. I, 20F, have been friends with these two girls Charlie, 20F, and Alex, 19F. We have been very close since middle school and get along and fangirl over the same anime, K-pop bands, artists etc. One day we decided to go to our favorite spot Chili's. We always separate the bill and there are zero issues. However, Alex decides they want to invite a male friend John, 18M, which is fine with all of us. The food was good per usual then the server asks for split or one check. Then Charlie, who usually says it's separate every time we go out and eat, says, all one, which I thought it was just her feeling generous that day. But then they started giving John shit-eating grins. Charlie said, Jun, you're paying for us all just to be clear. John says, what, with a visible confusion on his face. Alex and Charlie giggle, get up and they leave. They signaled me to go as well, but I was just as confused as John was. WDF just happened. Me and John sit there awkwardly. The check comes to $125. And I tell the server to give us a moment to provide payment. I only had enough for me, $30. And John only has enough for him, $40. Charlie texted in our group chat asking if I was coming with them. I told them WTF are they doing? Then they went on some BS that John should want to impress us and that it's a man's role to treat is like princesses or some BS. I thought they were joking but they were dead serious. And upon me going outside to physically confront them, they were serious. Because they left me and John with no ride in the tab. I called my dad if he could spare me $60 and that he can just cut off my allowance for two weeks. I explained the situation. But he agreed with Alex and Charlie and said that this is John's problem now, and not mine. It was like seen out of a movie I was in complete disbelief. I explained the situation to the server who was super cool, and said if you can't produce the payment now I can just leave a number, and they can charge me tomorrow. Out of one last ditch effort I called my uncle for the money, and he immediately understood and sent me the money, and even said he would be there to pick me and John up. I pay the tab. I apologize heavily to John about the entire situation, but he was actually really chill and super grateful for what I was doing, because he only had $40 from his birthday money, and decided to spend it with his friends. I get a text from Alex in the group chat asking if John paid for the tab. I said, no. I did unamused face, and got mad at me. Then my dad asked what had happened. I tell him the truth, that his brother paid for the tab, and he got mad at me. Do I live in the twilight zone? Am I crazy for not wanting to ruin a friend's life over chilies? Anyways, after Alex saying, I'm just not going to invite guys to our plans anymore, I left the group chat and blocked both Alex and Charlie. John also cut ties with them, and we have started talking more and more, and we sometimes play Fortnite together. Anyways, moral of the story. You think you know someone? Edit. I should probably empathize that me and John didn't even know each other before this happened. Second edit. Yes, I am 20 and still get a $50 weekly allowance. I am actively looking for work. Some of you guys are antagonizing my dad, but yet want to act like mine for not working face with tears of joy. Third edit. People are asking why I didn't just pay for my own tab, give them my friends' numbers or addresses and call the police yada dad. Is that what I should have done? 100% but I felt like John was already visibly stressed about the situation and I didn't want to escalate it to potentially more stress. I was thinking about John's well-being above everything, and having someone else cover the rest of the money was the easiest solution for me. Probably not the right one, but the easiest for me and John. 